Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. This painting was requested for me to show you how to do um, after I showed you what I painted on vacation. It's one of my vacation photos. I also wanted to show you how I keep my uh, pastel paintings safe in a notebook. Um, I just use a little tape. Let me slide this down. I uh, use a little tape to adhere a little deli paper and then kind of fold it over the edge of my paper and uh, that keeps it protected in transit because I don't like to use fixative on my work if I don't have to. So that is the uh, the picture we're going to uh, paint today. We're going to use pastels and I'm using chalk pastels. Well, they're actually called soft pastels, but you could use oil pastels if you wish. These were $10. Um, I think it was from Jerry's Artorama. They were running a special. I don't know what the regular price on these are, but that's Mary's brand um, Masters soft pastels and they are very lovely actually. I was surprised they were decent and only $10 because pastels, as you may know, can run a pretty penny. So we're going to start by sketching on our scene and I want to start with a flower because that's kind of the focal point and I'm going to sketch that in white and I'm working on a brown paper and the nice thing about pastels is that they are very opaque so they show up really well on your paper. So I'm just going to start by putting in Kind of some spiky leaves. Really, it's a very easy shape of a flower to draw. These ones, petals in the front, you want to get those in there too. I'll try not to not to get too fussy with it with our uh, drawing. And then we are. Uh, I want to make sure we have. Few more in the front and we'll also have a reflection in the water so you can just very lightly kind of mimic your shape here and that will be a knife of a guide for us to begin with and then um, when I put this back in the box I'm actually gonna let it kind of not put it in all the way let it kind of hang out so I can see uh, what colors I've been using now I'm gonna throw in some uh, lily pads and that one's going right over that reflection, so that's all right. We won't see that reflection. These are just ellipses here. Now I remember painting this. I was sitting on the dock, drinking my coffee before anybody was up. Well, me and the dog, <laughs> we were the only ones up, and uh, we were just sitting on the dock, having a little peace and quiet before the day began. There, and I kind of have a little bit of a a V-shaped composition so your eye gets drawn through the picture. I also want to put a couple buds in there. I'm going to do that with uh, the white just to get them sketched in. It's funny, water lilies tend to um, they tend to bloom in the morning and then close up in the afternoon so you kind of have to go out there in the morning to get that um, that picture. Now uh, we're going to start painting the water lily. I'm going to start with a little bit of uh, just a little warm yellow here in the middle. It was, uh, I was kind of excited. I was walking the dog this morning and uh, I came across a yard sale at my friendly neighborhood kinder dealer's house and um, he had roof rack for that would fit my van there for 20 bucks. So I scored that and I scored some padded um, seats with back backrests for my canoe and um, and a life jacket for my dog. So I was pretty psyched because I really like to do the paint and paddle. I love painting from a canoe. It's really, really nice. I'm going to grab a little bit of this uh, light purple here. This is just a set of uh, 48 pastels. Um, not uh, So I don't have a huge amount of colors. And actually, there are quite a few student grades that are decent that aren't very expensive. Sargent makes a good student grade pastel. Um, so does Faber Castell. They make um, just like a student grade that's really good. They have like a little half stick set. I think it's like 72 half sticks or something. Um, so instead of having, you'd have the pieces would be about half this big, but you'd get more colors. Um, leave that hanging out over the edge. I'm trying to think of any other ones that I, I the pro art ones aren't that great. I would avoid those, but the uh, the Sargent, the SMI, and the uh, the Faber Castell make a good student grade pastel, so you can use those with confidence. Get a little bit of my shadow here. I'm gonna blend my shadow with my fingers, my reflection rather. Get that in there before I start adding any of the watercolors, and then I'm just going in and just gently smoothing out some of the uh, some of the color there with my fingers and I'm going to want to layer over that a little bit but I wanted to get that base 
in there. I'm going to back in with some white. So I'm kind of excited. I, uh, my neighbor said that he thinks I can be able to get my canoe onto the rack myself because that was my big concern was not being able to lift it up there. And, um, and I, I would love to just kind of be able to take it out, take my canoe out spur of the moment and do some painting when the kids are in school. So I'm hoping that I can manage that. I uh, tried kayaks too when I was camp when I was at camp, but I have to say I didn't really like the kayaks as much. I didn't like sitting in the water. I liked being above the water. So the canoe was definitely more my style. I'm just using that purple again. I'm getting in some deeper colors towards the base of the petals. Remember, it's a pastel, a very impressionistic style. Um, we're not putting in tons of detail. We're more just giving the impression of these flowers. All right, and you can... Now, the other thing, this is a student grade pastel, non-toxic, which is nice. That's another reason I recommend them because you don't have to worry about the dust as much as you would with a, with a um, artist quality pastel. I am going to just base in some of these greens here, not coloring the whole thing in. Giving some really broad areas of color here. It's up to you how much you want to blend your pastels too. You might want to keep the strokes of color very crisp on all of them. I like to do a little bit of each. Let me use a little bit of this uh, vivid, vivid green in there too. Really lively. Kind of fun. This would be a fun uh, project also. Um, I know a lot of uh, scout leaders watch my channel. If you're getting ready for the artist badge um, for the Weeblos or you're doing an artist badge in Girl Scouts, um, it's really a great um, a great project you can do with the kids because as you can see it's nothing that difficult really you can find photographs on um, Wikimedia Commons as uh, copyright free or they're no they did they, they're just their the Creative Commons images that you can use which are really um, which are great. You don't have to worry about using somebody's image without permission. But I think if you're teaching a Girl Scout troop or something, you don't really have to worry about that too much. You can get outside, and a great thing is to get outside and paint too. I'm going to grab this kind of reddish brown and a little bit of uh, detail here and there. I think it's a little bit too much like my uh, paper color though, so I think I'm going to want something a little bit more distinct. Um, but I always leave my leave the stick kind of half out of the box while I'm working that way I know what colors I have used. I like this color and actually I think I would like this on the bud. Sometimes they're kind of more red as they are uh, They're getting ready to open up here The red will really make the green pop, but I wouldn't blend this because then you'll get kind of mud and gray So I want just a little bit of an accent of the uh, Of the red there and maybe even just a little bit of that in the shadows of my flower, just to give it a little bit of a movement in life. Pastels can be so exciting because you can lay down color quickly and you can lay colors next to other colors and make them more vibrant. It's just, it's just a lot of fun. You can always, and you can go back and you can layer colors very readily with pastels, which is which is nice enough the pastel some people like to store their pastels in a um in like a dish with rice or sand to kind of keep them clean i don't i keep mine right in the box they stay pretty clean that way but i um i have done that before when i've had like a big class and they've been sharing my supplies i've done that before all right i want to get some watery colors in there um oh you know what i can give a little bit of white in here show these buds getting ready to make an appearance a little bit of green in there too. It feels a little like it needs a little. I actually finally finished uh, Jurassic Park this morning. I thought it was the last book I started on vacation and uh, and I finally <laughs> I finished it. It's like man I read I read five other books while I was there and then uh, and then as soon as I get home I lose the urge or, uh, or something. I don't know. All right so I'm gonna use some of this uh, kind of navy blue. Oh, I just love how you can get these electrifying colors 
in your water when you're in your painting when you're using pastel and I love working on a colored background I think that's something everyone should try you can do this with um, an oil pastel or a watercolor crayon I would recommend keeping it dry just because it's going to be a little more vivid but if you don't have soft pastels and you have oil pastels why not if you have crayons give it a try you don't have to have the exact same thing I'm using so you know keep that in mind yes a ten dollar pastel set isn't expensive but if you have oil pastels already or you have crayons you know why not try with what you have first and uh, sometimes you'll just really love working with that and you don't even need to get anything else so don't feel like you have to get that on my account Ooh, I like this color this is another one of those shades of blue this is a nice little set I think that uh, I wish I've got a couple because this would have been really nice to have in my uh, I I am uh, I I don't like shopping and so when I find really cool things I have this birthday box and I put like cool things I find I'll buy them and I'll stick them in the birthday box so I'm ready before you know so I don't have to run out and buy a present right before birthday and a lot of times and I've been guilty of it I was guilty of it this week I invite people late to a birthday party and uh, then it's like oh my gosh you have no time to get to get anything any shopping done so it's nice when you have those options all right, so I think I could pretty much call this done. Somebody did ask me to put the dragonfly in there, so I will do that. There are dragonflies everywhere. And oh, hold on, I am gonna blow that dust out of the way. Um, there are dragonflies everywhere, and um, one didn't land on the on the lily pad, but it landed right on the dock where I was sitting and painting. So I sketched it, and I'm gonna put it right here in my little painting. So he's gonna go right there. I'm going to accent him with a little bit of purple, give him a couple little legs. Look at that purple go right here. So you keep using the same colors um, until you're done, until your picture's done, and accent a little, little bit of white, just like you would if you were doing your watercolor. And I don't, um, I don't stop and sharpen my my watercolors. I mean, my water. I don't stop and watercolor. My somebody's doing a dance right in front of me, and I'm having a very hard time to concentrate. Someone is one second. Um, okay, apparently there's an injury happening. I've got a pause. This is uh, this is pretty much it. I just added a little bit of white um, white highlight on here, and we're gonna call it good. Thank you so much for watching. Give me a thumbs up and subscribe. And until next time, happy crafting.